Thanks to the supporters of channel member Russ Eddy. Oh, boys and girls, have I been busy since the last episode? We've signed four new players. Only two of them were strikers, and none of them were that creative midfield player I said I, I wanted to replace Manish. So I call that progress. Hello and welcome to part six of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have a uh, an away game against Kettering in the National League North, plus a home game against Southport. It's January, everybody, which doesn't mean a huge amount to us because we don't have transfer windows down here in the National League North. We can do transfers whenever. It does mean the transfer window is open for the Football League clubs, which means two things. One, if we've got anyone any good, they might get stolen from us. Not hugely worried about that, but two... Players can be recalled from loans. And the one I'm worried about is Connor Carty because Connor Carty, on loan from Bolton, has been fantastic. Um, he is our joint top scorer, but Bolton are unhappy that I'm not playing him as a pressing forward because in our new 4-4-2 system, we use an advanced forward. Because of that, I have brought in other strikers. I'm not completely insane. There is a method to it, but we have brought in two new strikers. I'll show you them in a second as well as our other signings. This is the form we've been in. As you can see, really rather lovely form until we lost against Kettering in the first part of our Boxing Day and New Year's Day doubleheader local derby situation. We were in quite the run of unbeaten games and an even longer unbeaten run that had stretched nearly two months and has led to us being firmly within the playoffs as we've now ploughed past the halfway point of the season. We're actually only five points off the top of the league. We are in a promotion hunt, maybe. Say it quietly, because it is insane after the start we had. But we are potentially in a promotion hunt here. And that's why we've gone out and invested some money. Um, we've maybe got a defender coming in as well. As you can see, we're nicely within our budgets. Ignore that. None of my concern. This is I'm in my budgets. I'm a good boy. Um, but this is what's been going on transfer-wise. Obviously, we know Manish went on loan, went back to Portugal, has been playing football there. We just have to forget about him. He's done now. Um, but Lamine Sheriff, who had been used quite a lot in our team, he's gone to play in Guinea. Is that how you say that? I think it's Guinea. He's gone there anyway. He's done. He's another one who was on a non-contract, had been a regular player for us, and just left. Just, just like that. Just gone. Non-contracts. I'm not really on board with them. We've got rid of most of them now. Most of them have been, re have been replaced by lower cost uh, permanent players who were mostly on contract till the end of the season. Um, although uh, Brown Sterling is the one who's got a contract into next season at the moment. The great rebuild is still looming. But the four players we brought in, Cameron Green, I did suggest we might go and get this kind of player because we only had three players who could play on the left-hand side of our team. Uh, we had a left-back, a left midfielder, and then a guy who could play both in Fox. So I figured it might be a good idea to find another guy who can play both Cameron Green is that guy. He's really a left back, but he is pretty comfortable playing on the left-hand side of midfield as well. And he's nice and quick. And you know, I like him nice and quick in the wide areas. He'd been at St. Albans previously on loan from Wrexham and has done a little bit of a tour. Presumably, he was a policeman. He's 23 now. So presumably, at 15 years old, he was a policeman. Is that how that works? The Metropolitan Police, the football team, have anything to do with, you know the Metropolitan Police these days. I am confused. But Cameron Green is in. Sonny Graham is in as well, mainly because I am very impressed that at 20 years old, he has got a beard like that. I mean, I am something of a beard connoisseur and I couldn't have grown this at 20 years old. Sonny Graham is the manliest man in the history of the universe. Unfortunately, despite his fantastic beard, he's not actually that great. He was kind of a panic signing uh, with Sheriff leaving, we needed another central midfielder in. He's only a two-and-a-half-star current ability player. Had been with Carty at Bolton. Has only made one appearance for us so far. He's um, probably not going to play a lot unless we get some injuries, but we needed a body in central midfield. And then on come the strikers. Tyrese Onyeka is a new six-foot-one target man. Probably spelling the end of uh, Gash O'Clock. Uh, Michael Gash, I'm going to try and convince him to become just a coach. Certainly by the end of the season when his contract is up, I don't want to renew him as a player. Do want to keep him around as a coach because we do sponsor him. Uh, but Onyeka really does take his spot in the squad as a target man. And then Charlie Cap 
Katon Katon um, is our new. He's basically our Connor Carty replacement. He's a he's an advanced forward, which is the role we play in our team now. And if we go back to playing with a pressing forward, he can also do that. He's not played yet, uh, but has played twice for Shrewsbury in League One this year, coming off the bench. So he could be a pretty decent player for us. Like I say, not yet made his debut. You're going to see that in a second. We did lose the first match against Kettering. We play Kettering again now at their place. This is the team we're putting out there. But before I introduce you to them, just a reminder, if we could hit 5,000 likes on today's video, that would be absolutely fantastic. We've been really good with the likes so far in this series. And ultimately, if you want a video out tomorrow, we need 5,000 likes on this video. non to Legend is only a Monday to Friday series, but because it is the first weekend, as an extra special treat and reward for the loyalty you've shown with all your thumbs ups, if we get 5,000 likes... We'll do episodes each day. So, hello, it's Saturday. Um, if you want another one on Sunday, 5,000 likes. You know what to do. Thank you very much, boys and girls. We're setting channel records all over the place at the moment, and it is all thanks to the likes, the comments, the new subscribers, the in insane amount of views and watch time. It's not going to notice. It is appreciated. Thank you. So, the team for Kettering Away. We've got Crook in goal, a back four of Green. You've not seen him yet. Friat, Johnson, and Agbaji. Um, on the left-hand side of midfield, we've got Nicholson, then Kennedy, Lawler, and Sembi Ferris. And up front, a brand new strike partnership. They've never played together before. Onyeka making only his second appearance. He wasn't great on his debut. And then Katen, Katen, alongside him. We just want to really have a look at the new boys. Brown Sterling is likely to carry on being my main starting striker. He's just having a little bit of a Christmas rest. There's no harm in having a little bit of a Christmas rest, but obviously he's the guy who's already under contract for next season. So we don't want to have a guy who's already under contract for next season and start pushing him down the pecking order. That'd be crazy. That's an interesting decision there by uh, by Edwin at right back to just kind of nod the ball to nobody. Don't really know why he's bothered keeping that in. Just let it go out for a throw. Um, and there's Johnson just heading it straight into an opposition player and... Kettering are frustrating. They were much better than us in the previous match. And they seem to be much better than us here as well. I don't really get it. They're, I think they're below us in the league. We'll watch the replay and then we'll check the league table. But I, did I mention we'd been on a long winning run and an even longer unbeaten run? We were starting to look like a very good team. And then you've got Kettering, who were down here in 17th place, who apparently, for some reason, have just got our number. And I don't know what it is. Because we've been absolutely fantastic against everybody else. Teams much higher at the league than them. But this Kettering team just seemed to know how to beat us. And it, I mean, I am finding it very upsetting now. This is four goals in a game and a bit we've conceded against a Kettering side that looking at the league table should be rubbish. And I don't know what's going on. I don't want to see the replay this time. I want some explanation for what's happening. I mean, they are doing the FM23 flat back seven, which I'll level with you, not seen a huge amount of down in the National League North. In the B to save I did with Chelsea, we were basically playing against teams doing that week in, week out. And that Chelsea team did have enough about it to break it down. And I wonder if part of the problem is this setup, this team, these two strikers who are being left alone up front just can't break down a back seven, which... Yeah, I get that. I understand why they're going to be hard to score against. But why are they doing so well against us? Because on the on the flip side, we've got our two banks of four. We should be very solid defensively. They're only really playing with three players in the attack. It's like watching England. They've just got three attackers and everyone else has to stay in their own half. But they're three nil up. And I don't I don't know what's going on. How are they in the bottom half of the table? What is happening here? There's no logic to this. We've been... Oh, football manager, you little rascal. Why do you do this to me from time to time? Because I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to do about it. I mean, I said in the intro, we didn't sign our Manish replacement. And against almost every team in this league, not been a problem. But I think this is the kind of opponent where we could actually do with somebody just sitting in the number 10 role in that little pocket, creating some stuff just to give us someone to give the ball to, to spend a little bit of time with the ball, keep some possession. 
our, our direct wing play system, getting it up to the big lads, getting crosses in, that's worked against everybody else. This Kettering team just absolutely nullify it. They cancel it out. And we don't have a plan B because we don't have the personnel for a plan B. If we can't get you with little passes like that and then crosses into the big guys, which I thought we were going to do this, as I was saying, if that move doesn't work, we don't have any other plan. <laughs> we have built a squad around being good at doing that and that alone. And uh, clearly, here in the pouring rain against a very defensive Kettering team, it ain't going to work. So we're just going to have to sit back, take our medicine and hope that we're a little bit better against Southport in the second of today's two matches and hope that these two consecutive games against Kettering where they've ruined us don't rock our confidence too much because we had been doing very well up until that point. It's almost as if the transfers I've made haven't necessarily improved the team. I won't have that. That's slander and I won't have it. I'm a very good football manager player. I'm very good at transfers, I'll have you know. These transfers have been great. Um, Kennedy playing it out to Edwin. Edwin now to Lawler. Can we just look with this? Oh, it's so frustrating having this huge number of defenders in our way. We can't get the space out wide to get the cross in. And when we do, there's nobody to cross to because they're just completely crowded around us. How do we counter this with a team that's got no creativity? Answer, we probably don't. Lawler to Johnson. It doesn't help as well. They're looking at the team. We've had two terrible performances today. Caton on debut has been shocking. He's going to be coming off in a minute. And Crook in goal has had a terrible match as well. So, I mean, I think we're probably a little bit unlucky with Kettering on a 1.16 XG. We are a little bit unlucky that we've conceded three goals. It's a bit of a flashback to the Buxton game we had right back at the start of the season where we've not played anywhere near as poorly as the scoreline suggests, we're actually ahead on XG. We've been the better team, uh, but we're just, everything's gone Kettering's way. And the frustration's setting in. Right, Sembi Ferris has been released on the right-hand side here. Squares it to Caton. Right, he's done. He is done. You might never see that boy again. Brown Sterling is on. Oh, we've left Connor Carty out of the matchday squad today to give that guy his debut. Carty's back for the next match. That guy. Oh. Four stars of current ability, supposedly. Onyeka doesn't seem much better either. And now Edwin playing it forward to Sembi Ferris, who's gotten a decent crossing position again. There is Onyeka. And there is the big target man, the new boy, grabbing his first goal for the club. Have we got a comeback on? I mean, I said we don't have a plan B. We haven't had to resort to plan B. We've just kept banging away at plan A and it has eventually worked. Sembi Ferris to Onyeka, cross in, headed into the goal. That's what we do. It's all we do. When it works, it is quite effective. Can we do it two more times before the end of the match? Connor Johnson is tiring fast. We don't have anyone to come on B and we still haven't signed another centre-back. There is hopefully a centre-back about to join us. We are working on that currently. Um, I think... It might be Gash O'Clock. I know Onyeka's just scored, but it's Gash O'Clock. And we're going to take off Edwin and bring on Baisley as well. And we're going to go attack him. We're going to demand more. We're going to see if we can have a, a Michael Gash moment. He loves to perform for you lot. He loves the fact we sponsor him. Let's, uh, let's grab another goal. Lawler with the free kick in a dangerous position. Set piece is a key for us. Floating it over to that far post where Fryer is. Fryer has a couple of goes at it. It's scrambled away by Kettering. And that's the kind of situation where you need a little bit of luck in a game like this. We're so far ahead on XG. Kettering have had three shots on target and scored all three of them. Oh. Oh, football manager. I, I so want to love you. And then you do that to me. We need to bounce back against Southport. That's been a horrible couple of matches against Kettering. Right, the villains of the last match have been dealt with. Carty's back in up front. Ado Antoine is back in at left back. The one we can't really do anything about is Crook in goal because our backup goalkeeper. I mean, I would be better off with me in goal. So Crook has to stay in goal. But the other two who had horrible red ratings are dealt with and done. Ado Antoine and Carty are in the defender we were trying to sign didn't sign for us he's gone elsewhere so yet again our search for a third center back continues we have potentially got a good one coming in on loan so fingers crossed 
tomorrow's episode, because there's going to be an episode tomorrow, isn't there? Because we're going to get to 5,000 likes. Fingers crossed, in tomorrow's episode, I can introduce you to a new loney centre-back that we should be getting in from Coventry, which... Cross your fingers, boys and girls, because ever since Johnson's suspension expired three games into the season, Johnson and Fry have started every single match in every single competition, and sooner or later, one of them's going to get suspended or injured or need a rest or, you know, have a couple of terrible games. We need a third centre-back. I have been riding my luck for long enough, only having two playable centre-backs at the club. It is time to bring another one in. Probably should have done that before signing... I signed four strikers now. Probably should have stri signed a centre-back somewhere in there. But let's face it, we've got a lot of big strikers who, if I know anything about football, and I think we'll all agree I probably do, big strikers can probably say play centre-back, can't they? Both roles are just heading the football. It's, all, it's the only skill you really need. On Onyeka has done very well to get there first. I don't know why Senbi Ferris is with him. But, I mean, make the run infield. I know I'm playing you as a winger, but use a little bit of initiative. Make the run infield. We've got away with it because Jordan Nicholson's very good. But Senbi Ferris there, I'm not quite sure what he's thinking. <laughs> Onyeka is right there. Don't chase him. Make a run. So look at him. He's just chasing him. Why, does it, why is it Onyeka who's got to come inside? But Nicholson does really well here. Takes it down on the left-hand side into the back of the net. 1-0. That's exactly what we needed. Lovely, lovely, lovely. 1-0 to Peterborough Sports. What does that... that I'll tell you what, we're only three points off the top of the table. We started the episode five points off and we've had a terrible defeat in there. It shows that there's not necessarily an outstanding team in this league. And if we can put another run of form together, similar to the run that we had through November and most of December... We could genuinely go to the top of the league if we can get that run together. I think it does rely on us finding a centre-back who can slot into the team if needed. Who is that who's running slower than I do? Um, I need to click on I need to find out who that is. It's useless Sonny Graham. I told you he wasn't very good. He was just lumbering along. I mean, he's not quite got the, the ginger hair, ginger beard he had in his photo, has he? Um, but there he is, look, just lumbering. Watch him lumber. Doesn't know what he's doesn't know what he's doing, where he's going. That's a box to box midfielder, is the instruction we've given Sonny Graham today. And uh yeah. Southport back into the game. We're gonna demand more because we do need a win. This would be three matches without a win if we mess up here. And all three of them against teams in the bottom half of the table. Right, Connor Carty has not been do we give Caton another chance? We do, because Carty's also not been very good. Neither has Addo Antoine. We're bringing on the two boys who we took off in the last match. And then I think logic dictates we bring Kennedy on for Graham in midfield, get our first choice centre mid back in there after he's had a little bit of a rest. And you know what? We're going to go attack him. We might even push the wingers on. If we don't score here, we're going to a 4-2-4. We're going to push the wingers on a bit. And, oh, that's a good header from Johnson. And he's unfortunate to have that cleared. Kennedy comes away with the ball. It's still, the move is still ongoing, but no, we are going to push these guys on for these last 10 minutes or so just to, just to try and get a little bit of something going. We're demanding more. We need a win. We need to get back to winning ways. We've had two matches here where we've been the better team. Again, XG is what it's all about. Two matches where we've been the better team and not really come away with anything close to what we deserve. That's been a frustrating episode, everybody. Very frustrating. Let's look at the league table. We are... St I mean, we're now seven points off the top. I'm interested in the XG league table. <sighs> yeah, that, that feels about right. Strangely, it doesn't make me feel as good as I thought it would. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Remember, 5,000 likes, you get another episode tomorrow morning. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.